In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the biological record tool from the Tom Bio Productivity Tool Suite. So you access it in the normal way from the plugins menu, and it's this second item here. By default, the tool opens docked in the right hand side of the screen. Now, the premise of this tool is that you can take any spreadsheet of, of biological records or any sorts of records, in fact, as long as it contains at least one column of grid references. And I'm going to demonstrate that now by opening a very simple spreadsheet, which is this one here. In fact, it opens a CSV files, comma, separated value files. But that's no problem because any major spreadsheet, including Excel, will save a spreadsheet as a CSV format if you tell it to. So I'm going to open that one now. So there you can see it's opened there. And if I look at the records tab, I can see the actual raw data. It's a very simple one, as I said, a minimal data set that I'm showing you the basic functionality containing just grid references. And if I scroll down here, you can see there are grid references of all different precisions. So it'll take a mixed bag of hectads, monads, tetrads, six figure of grid references, and so on, and, and treat them all the same. So once you've done that, you need to select the column which contains the grid reference. Well, it's easy in this spreadsheet, there is only one column. And then you click this button here to create a map. There's 10,000 records in this um, example spreadsheet, so it takes a few seconds. But there they are, appeared. So we've got some data in the northwest of England here. And as well as putting the points on the map, you can see that it's created a temporary layer uh, in the layers list up here. And just like all the other tools um, in, in this suite, um, you can change the properties of these layers, you can save them as a permanent layer if you wish, you can treat them just like an ordinary layer so you can do what you want with them. So although these are temporary layers, you can if you wish save them as permanent layers. These buttons, This button here will delete the last layer created and this button will delete all open temporary layers. So I'm just going to do that to show you. Create it again. Notice that these have come out in a different colour this time. Uh, QGIS randomly selects a colour when these uh, layers are created, but in a minute you'll see how we can control that just like we can any other layer. So now I want to demonstrate this feature, creating records as grid, grid squares. Previous map is the centre point of the grid square corresponding to the grid reference of each record, but this option will actually create the grid squares uh, that correspond to each grid reference for a record. So there you can see, let's take the points off so you can see them a bit better. You can see everything from hectares down tetrads, monads, and six-figure and eight-figure good references over here. So that, that's useful to see the precision, the sort of general precision of your data and how it's distributed. Um, but normally the major, uh, most useful ones are creating records as points, but also these ones down here creating records as atlases. I'm going to take this last option here and make a 10 kilometer map of these records, an atlas map. Okay, let's just move that down the, below the others so you can see them on top. Let's take this one off. So there's the points translated into a hectad um, atlas map. Now, Let's talk a bit about the colours. So I can't see anything through that map at the moment, but what I'll do is generate it again with a transparency set. So I'm going to delete all the layers using this button now and increase the transparency a bit. And now if I create that hectad map again, you should be able to see the base map, which here is just the uh, vice county boundaries through the layer. But remember I said that you can treat this as any, as you can any layer in QGIS. So I'm going to actually change the graphics completely. Instead of having a single symbol, I'm going to make a kind of thematic map. Now, this isn't a lesson in how to do this, so I'm going to do it very quickly, just to show you that it can be done, really. So there the map is now coloured up depending on the number of records in each of the squares. So you can see that the greatest density of records um, for this Mer Merseyside area here um, is in the uh, Sefton Coast area. OK, let me demonstrate what this drop down does. If I change that, I can also I can create circles rather than um, squares. Now let's instead of doing a hectad atlas, because we've seen that, let's go down to a tetrad atlas and create that. 
So there we've got a tetrad atlas for the same area. Let's take the hectares off. And again, you can colour that up and I'll do it in exactly using exactly the same colour scheme as I did before. And you can see them the records there as a tetrad. So you can see how easy it is to do this stuff, how quick how quick it is to create them on the fly, but you can save them as permanent maps if you want to. And then the um, real benefit of being able to create them really quickly on the fly will be shown in the next tutorial when I show you how to make take advantage of spreadsheets of proper biological records with taxonomic names in. Uh, so you'll see that in the next one. That's it for this.